Hello, lovely subscribers. It's time once again for another episode of Utopia Talk, Season 1, Episode 4. I'm joined once again by my good friend Captain Sidaris from the Valiant Channel. Hello, Captain. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? So, Episode 4, let's dive right in, Captain. What are your thoughts? Yeah, <laughs> it started crazy. The beginning was really hard to see from something a little bit calmer last time to something so heavy in this episode straight into the screaming yeah yeah (laughs) it was strange (laughs) to say at least it's getting a little exhausting isn't it (laughs) it is it is especially if you consider we're doing two episodes back to back (laughs) there is that but i I kind of meant the story (laughs) but yes that as well I mean, especially the story. If you watch uh, two episodes of what Strange New Words, you are not really tired. You are pissed, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here it was again very funny that we talk about the comparison between uh, the show and what we experienced the last few three years, basically COVID. Yeah. I mean, that's actually while we were watching this one, that was one thought that popped into my head is um, I don't subscribe to any conspiracy theories. I don't think there's anything wrong with vaccines. I don't think there was some grand plan by the Chinese government or the American government or Bill Gates to get us to wear masks and stick needles in our arms. Um, And I don't want anybody watching this to think that that my love of utopia as a show means I do subscribe to that kind of thinking. I 100 percent don't. But it does make for some fantastic fiction. Yeah. I, but I want my chip from Bill Gates. <laughs> well, hell, I if it makes Windows technology, if it makes Windows run any better, fine. Stick it in my brain. Uh, well, it comes with a subscription. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the show. Yeah, um, what are the notes, Cap? Yeah, where in this episode some very strange things. I think. For example, how did Jessica find them in the mansion? You know what? I I did wonder that when Ian walked outside and Jessica was there, she hadn't already been there with them, right? No, and there, there, at least I think there was no mention of this mansion ever. And th- directly at the beginning, oh, finally we found it. There it is, something like that. So yeah, huh? what well, I, you never mentioned it? I tell you what, I'll after after we fit, wrap this up and before I start putting this together, I'll go back and double check, and I'll probably put one of my edit notes in the screen if I notice. <laughs> we anything. have wrong. Yeah. <laughs> A few times I saw in this episode how the people find each other that quickly. It's also the uh, the moment Ian basically went for his brother. <laughs> he instantly got recognized by the good guys, but not by the bad agents. So, uh... well, don't forget, Milner knew where he was coming from in the first place, and she said she had a team fo- trailing him all day. So they already knew he was there, yeah. whereas whereas the bad guys were trailing his brother. So they and he did have the hood up and everything. But yeah, I mean, when when she kept saying, "Have you it, it been, have they, have they seen so you? Have they seen instantly. you?" Instantly, yeah, <laughs> they should have seen him. But okay, whatever. Again, it makes the plot continue. So it, it makes the plot go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think story wise, they are sometimes jumping the gun here. I would say <laughs> there's a. There's a lot yeah. to cover, but this is probably just me making excuses for the filmmakers again. We also uh, see for the second or third time that Becky is kind of a secret agent, a double agent. Oh, you the phone say. call. She's she's uh, having the phone call, I think, the second time now. Really? Where was I? Did I miss the first? The first one was in... I can remember second episode, I guess, or third episode, uh, where where she is at the phone booth, basically. Oh yes, just yes, yes. Talking course, to somebody. Yeah, yeah I, yeah. I think it was the second time, and if she for some reason expected that she's a little bit undercover, doesn't mean she's an agent, doesn't mean anything. But if she expected that she needs a secret phone, a secret uh guy who she can contact contact for some reason 
why isn't why isn't she, why isn't she prepared for uh this whole mission and takes more medication does we don't know what medication she is taking of course but if you're preparing for the emergency you have your phone maybe you also take some more anti uh, baby pills with you so <laughs> well prepare course, better becky i i do know where it's going um and i can't tell you because it will ruin sure, it. Sure, sure, yeah, sure, sure. You shouldn't, but, but um, just I, what I see. So you know, I, I can say I think it's fantastic. You you're picking up that this is what you're calling out on and what's sticking in your head and what's standing out to you, because it does become important and it is going to get explained. I can tell you that much without ruining anything. So yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> also, what what was very strange? Um, we mentioned, or well, I mentioned already, that Ian is going to uh, his brother, mm -hmm. but just before. Jessica arrives and we have this one minute, two minute strange scene where they talk basically on basically Jessica forces him at gunpoint to uh, call uh, no, no. MI6 yeah. and then cut basically and he's going for his brother. That, that is a, bit a an odd big one. jump. And as we've mentioned a couple of times, this is my sixth, I think, fifth or sixth watch through. I still, I can't remember why she did that. I can't remember why <laughs> she had him call out. Obviously, we see Milner later with Ian saying, why did you leave me a voicemail saying, we're Jess you know, with Jessica. Yeah. Um, I, can't, I can't remember what the motivation or what her reason for that is. So maybe that, so there you go. Even I'm getting something new out of it on this watch because, yeah, that doesn't stick with me at all. So, or, or maybe... Yeah there was some subtle hint at why she did it in this episode and we both missed it. But yeah, I, I can't but think not of... only the motivation part, but also the, the story part, the continu continuity part, basically at gunpoint. And then, Oh, he walks in the city is under uh, disguise to follow his brother. It was a little bit, there was a scene missing here. Felt a bit maybe discontinuous. They cut it. Yeah, maybe, but maybe it, it, there was, was I would have preferred if there would be a little bit more explanation. Where is Jessica going? They leave us a little bit hanging there. Hey, there's no hand holding, man. It's it's, it's big boy pants time. You got to... <laughs> I know. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Th then I guess we we should especially talk a little bit longer than usual for the last five or ten minutes of the episode in the apartment. Yeah. It started a little bit. Um, on the comedy side, <laughs> even the music wasn't it? it was a little bit lighthearted yeah, when they're in the van was, to get in. Yeah, Wilson basically uses a, a garbage bin to hide and then go into uh, the garage behind the car. It was also it, it was a comedy style basically. It was a little and then switch abruptly. Yeah. And the first thing I saw in the uh, flat basically was. Okay, talk to him and say, basically, open your shirt, uh, show me your belly. Yeah. And then call back up, maybe. But make sure the target is the target, not, oh, <laughs> get everybody in trouble before. Well, there you go. You're a better um, impromptu sucked into a life of being a spy than they are. <laughs> I watch too, too much <laughs> movies, I guess. <laughs> and then as soon as they are up there all together... It kind of works, of course, that they they give the the, the children the gun and. <laughs> well, I still remember the maybe not not the best idea. Yeah, there had been but... some foreshadowing, hadn't there, that um, Alice possibly shouldn't be left alone with this guy. A couple of times, you know, is this the man who did it? Yeah. Who are we going to see? And and Grant telling them we're going to go and find the guy who did this to us. Um, but even on my first watch too, I remember when Becky gave Grant the gun. I thought, no, <laughs> no, he's 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no matter what the situation is, don't give Grant the gun. There was no necessity also. <laughs> yeah. Two well, guys already covered the entrance. Why should... It was just Becky wanting one to see, wasn't it? Adult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was just forced that Alice shoots the guy. Yeah. It was the only reason, basically. Well... 
As it, it kind of reinforces what we've just been saying, which is these guys are completely out of their debt. They don't know what they're doing. They're not prepared for this. They're going to be very lucky if they survive. And maybe we could now slowly argue, yeah, also a little bit crazy. Old Cole, this comic, beautiful. <laughs> so they are maybe on the crazy side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would, that would explain everyone thinking it looks so beautiful. It's just everybody's nuts. Also, um, just before he died, somebody came from. Uh, no, somebody rings the bell yeah. first. Somebody downstairs. And um, he says, Yeah, sure, she sent them up. And nobody called basically, Who is coming? Nobody hmm. said. What is happening? Why did you say that? Who is coming? Yeah, you think that information would be would have nice. been useful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> is it the police? Is it the fire department? Or is it a pizza service? Uh, it's, it's another example, isn't it, of it being necessary to not provide that information because until he opens, well, until he's at the other side of the door and and claiming um, or, t or telling him who he is, we are not meant to know. It's the guy from Corvat. So it's another necessity from a writing perspective, because, I mean, let's face it, the but entire, as the as, entire scene would play I out completely the bell, differently. I saw something in that direction, mm. because we already had the scene before um, that he has to go and test, I think they called the it the new vaccine yeah, or something. New, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, but this guy was responsible for... Um, sneaking the protein into the food supply, right? So I don't think he'd be going there to test the vaccine with him. I don't think we'd expect him to be turning up at this guy's place. That's true, but yeah. somehow I connected the dots that mm. he has to test it and um, in the sense of the, the old uh, proteins, what they already have in the food chain. That's if true. If it works, if it doesn't. Because they have, haven't of they, course, already it, figured out that it, the, the virus affects everybody. It's the vaccine that's selective in terms of its cure. Yeah. So yes, I suppose they probably do need to make sure or test it against the protein because it's evidently the pro some combination of the two that's going to make the difference. So fair enough, yeah. Of course, it doesn't make sense to make that in the home place, at yeah. the flat from this guy, maybe a laboratory. Yeah, so but maybe this guy can get into the lab. Or, why yeah. send it to the to the boss and not send it directly to the lab? Where they tested it, it was, yeah, story reasons. Yeah, exactly. Not logic just, reasons. Yeah, well, we'll just have to sort of strap in for the ride and try and not think that critically about it, maybe. Yeah, yeah I, I'm really curious how how much information they get from that guy they basically now have captured. Well, that's a big part of next episode. Yeah. Yeah. And consider how much discussion they already had because of Alice. If she should just be left alone on the road or killed, whatever. And now they have a possible hostile target. Yeah, with them as well. Yeah. How should they treat that? Yeah. Speaking of that conversation they were having right at the start of the episode, um, as to whether they should try and drop Alice off with grandparents or keep her with them, that kind of thing. That was another one where the framing was interesting. We had Wilson in the middle, Becky on one side and Ian on the other. And it was like Wilson split the frame down the middle. And did you notice that on Becky's side, it was all lush and green? And on Ian's side, it was all dark and dead? No, no. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up a yeah. clip of that while we're talking yeah. about it. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's intentional, because I, I don't know. Well, also, I'm that's colorblind. That's nothing which happens by coincidence. Of Very course, little in this visually yeah. is accidental, yeah. But because uh, I am colorblind, I guess maybe... The field on the right was also green rather than brown. I can't tell the difference, but it was certainly dark. I have to check also. Yeah. It was certainly darker. But the, the, the strange thing is, I, I guess because maybe that was to suggest the argument that if they leave Beck, uh, um, Alice alone somewhere, she's going to die. So the argument to drop to, to dump her <laughs> meant death, and the argument to keep her meant life. But there was certainly that going on visually. Which is another reason. I, mean, I just keep coming back to it. I love the look of this show. I love how it's how considered it is. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Gushing at this point. The arts department did an amazing job here. Definitely, yeah, it's, it's well. I'll tell you what, we sound like people. We did, sound yeah. like people talking about the comic. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's so beautiful. <laughs>
Mind you, well, yeah. Actually, no, tell you what, other people, so in another universe, somebody is watching us and saying exactly the same thing we say about uh, about us saying, people saying the comic's beautiful, because we're both going, oh, this show's so beautiful, and they've just watched a scene where a guy got his stomach blown open with a shotgun. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even go that far to another universe. <laughs> I, I another think just either. Reddit alone or <laughs> YouTube alone, there are some interesting guys out there. I'm sure we'll get some comments. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Leave them below. A little bit shorter, this review, but I guess that's everything. No, yeah, yeah. That's it. All we have got to do, Captain, is chat about what we chat about. And if we're done, we're done. Yeah. All right, then. Do you well, have any more thoughts? Uh, no, no, nothing sprung to mind this time. Um, okay. Although, as we discussed earlier, I think we're, the pair of us are possibly getting utopia fatigue just because we're trying to cram these in so quickly. <laughs> so a bit of a break. Maybe we'll have more of an atter in the next one. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, thank you very maybe much. Maybe that I can, as a closing thought, I think the episode was a little bit um, strangely paced. Let's phrase it that way. The beginning, very hectic. Yes. And the middle ground, I would say, until the last 10 minutes was very slow. Yeah, that's true. They had mm. this kind of date night, uh, stalker Jessica in the background. It's moved very slow and yeah. then very hectically. Very true. But we got we got some considerable amounts of character development. We found out a great deal about Arby. Yeah. Arby, Raisin Boy. Yeah. So this would, this would be why um, back in episode one, um, I said, okay, we don't know his name yet, so I won't say it because it contains spoilers. Because, yes, Pietri, Arby, Raisin Boy. <laughs> I just think that's fantastic. And, of course, that's why in the previous episode when the kid dropped his... Um, chocolate covered raisins that was what finally made arby hold back have pause for thought before he mercilessly murdered him but yeah some you know it gives us a little bit of characterization to know that he there is a human being in there it's just he's very very buried under all the psychosis and issues that have happened due to his bizarre upbringing it definitely is bizarre yeah. <laughs> but but I, I like the fact that he's now a little bit a loose gun in the whole system. Yes, he's you evidently stepped away, really. hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and of course, um, at the end of this episode, we're left with him and Jessica together about to have a conversation, and we don't know what that's going to be about. And Jessica, of course, now yeah. finally has her hands on the manuscript again. So, and that's going interesting places. Yeah. To be honest, I also would have liked at least two or three more lines why he let her go they mention it that he even did that but i would have liked maybe a, a short scene where where you see them from the point of last episode mm -hmm. whether in the corridor for example and they discuss why she can go now well and then maybe she also says hey there is this farmhouse i always wanted to visit <laughs> And maybe that's how they know together. Nice yeah, fair enough. Well, um, I can tell you that if my memory is serving me correctly, the next episode is one of my favourites, and we okay. get a great deal of explanation. To okay. not all, to evidently see. not all, but several of the mysteries. Certainly, in terms of the conspiracy, there's going to be some big developments in the next episode. Looking forward to it. And maybe okay. next time I also remember that I turn on my lights because I forgot it this time. Ah. <laughs> no yeah. worries, man. You look well, fine. Everybody has a great time, I would say. Yes. Oh, uh, sorry. You have to close it. It's uh, your Actually, show. well, you know, what do I say? I'll say what I always say. So long, lovely subscribers. And we'll catch you next You're time. Bye-bye.